Hello, everyone, and welcome to the final week of reading the Old Testament. Oh, there is much to say this week, so I'm going to start saying what I need to say for the week. Here we are uh, in terms of what you need to do. The fun thing about week eight is you can just go ahead and start because there's no additional reading for week eight. Yay, said the class. Or, oh no, said the class. So, um, I don't know, wh whichever one you are. Some of you are excited, some of you are not excited. But uh, the main thing for this week is reviewing core study skills um, and then articulating a select theological theme. Those are at least the objectives. But let's get honest. You guys just care about what to do. So, you got assignments 8 1, 8 2, and 8 3, as well as a discussion board this week. Really quickly, on the discussion board. Um, how has this course inspired you to continue reading and studying the Old Testament? Do you feel that the course reading lectures requirements have allowed you to meet the learning objectives? Comment on any of the following that might apply. So you could essentially just um, cut and paste, you know, this, this little piece here and then write a post on it. Keep in mind, this is not your course evaluation. This is simply your final post, your final discussion board that you will get credit for only if you do it. Um, I did just make a post on Facebook reminding you guys, please, 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 I am begging you. I mean, I could command you, but uh, and mark off if you don't do it. But we really need you to do your course evaluations. Those are official course evaluations that are um, in Blackboard. You should see that on the announcement page as well, and it should probably also be emailed to you. So if you, if you have any issue whatsoever, seeing or understanding what is my course evaluation, which is separate than this discussion board, um, please call or email MDLC, that's Moody Distance Learning Center, at moody.edu, or call 1-800-758-6352, that's the number for Moody Distance Learning, and say, hey, I want to do my course evaluations for my classes, do an evaluation for all your classes, not just this one. Please do a course evaluation, though. Um, but also, this is direct feedback to your professors on this course and to each other, what you guys learned and, and uh, what you thought was great. This is more of a uh, uh, reflection for yourself and your classmates of how the course went, but the course evaluation I want you to also do. So I'm taking that uh, this time to remind you of that. Okay, so that's the discussion board, and um, you know you should get full credit for that as well as the course evaluation. Please do that. Okay, now for these three assignments. Um, as you well know, you've got your thematic analysis final essay coming up. Okay? Um, this, however, is a little confusing. You got 8 1, the loyalty study of Achan and Rehab, and then you've got assignment 8 3, the thematic analysis presentation. In this, this presentation, um, it says that you're going to create a three to four minute video blog presentation of your study in assignment 8.1. Your video should be pedagogically effective. That just means your, it should be based on a, a solid teaching method, meaning your video should uh, be structured in such a way that it does a good job to teach someone what you're trying to um, communicate to them and will be graded strictly. To this effect, please note the following assignment parameters. Okay, and it just tells you how to do it. Okay, no setting, include a clear introduction and conclusion, and so forth from your thesis. Here's the there's the confusing thing. This says assignment 8.1. Um, it is not meant to be on assignment 8.1. It's meant to be on assignment 8.2, right? So it's the thematic analysis presentation on your thematic analysis final essay, right? Okay, and then you've also got this loyalty study on Khan and Rehab, right? Right, okay. So I'm going to actually give you a choice, a choice, my friend. Uh, you can either can the video blog, not do it, or you can can the loyalty study with Achan and Rehab. So essentially, 
if you just want to say, I don't want to do this extra assignment, I'm already doing this, and I just want to do this video blog after I'm done with 8.2, it essentially puts, you know, on a video what I did here. You can do that. If you, um, you know, are freaked out at the idea of recording yourself, and that's going to be so much more where I would rather just do this study here and be done with that and not worry about making a video at all, then I'm allowing you to do that. So you only have to do, you, all, all of you still have to do your thematic analysis, that 8-2, but I'm allowing you to choose whether you do this or this, okay? Hopefully that will make the final week a lot easier as well, all right? So um, now let me go through these assignments. So if you do choose to do 8-1, let me show you what that can look like, all right? Uh, let's go to the the syllabus here. Okay, it says in this assignment you'll complete a comparative study of uh, Joshua two with Joshua seven passages that chronicle two surprising stories that both revolve around loyalty to Yahweh. Similar to five one, this study will be completed in two steps. So you've got this narrative analysis guide thing going on again. In step one, you will use the narrative analysis worksheet to record your observations from both chapters according to the literary elements covered in the Matthewson reading in week. Five. See the narrative analysis guide for a concise summary of these elements. More specific instructions are included in the narrative analysis worksheet. You will submit this worksheet as a piece of this assignment, uh, which is about 35% of the entire assignment. Okay, so that narrative analysis worksheet, if you just go back here, you've got the narrative analysis worksheet, which is what you turn in, and then the narrative analysis guide. I'll show you both of those in a second. Those are the two things you need, um, uh, but that's just part of it. Then the second part is that you're gonna, um, based on step one, write a two to three page double spaced paper explaining what these two chapters together teach you about loyalty to Yahweh, and then how the theological theme of loyalty in these chapters interacts with the broader Old and New Testament theology. So how would you see loyalty throughout the entire uh, realm of scripture both in the Old and New Testament. In other words, how does the lesson about loyalty to Yahweh in Joshua 2 and 7 add to, sharpen, agree with, or contradict other parts of scripture that teach about loyalty to Yahweh? So you'd have to think about what other pieces of scripture talk about loyalty to, to God, loyalty to Yahweh in particular, and uh, interact with these passages in Joshua 2 and 7 in relation to that. All right, so um, pretty straightforward, not a long paper, two to three page double space is, is not a lot of writing, but um, it is another assignment. So make sure you do it with plenty of time and don't leave it to the last minute. Um, let me let me show you what the worksheet looks like now. So here's the worksheet. Whoops, I already had it down here. Let me pull it up here. All right. And this is just the first part, part one again. All right. So below, you're going to use this graph or this chart below, and, and you're going to see how, how the authors are using Hebraic narrative, so narrative in the Hebrew or the Old Testament, in Joshua 2 and 7. Um, using these columns, give the name of the literary device there, all right? So, that, so you would just say, this is what I found, chapter 2, starting at, you know, you're going to go 1, verses 1 to 24, and you're going to find... Uh, 10 or more literary devices, and then you're going to go to Joshua 7 um, and do the same thing, 10 or more literary devices. Now, these literary devices that we mentioned are according to Matthewson, that um, you got that narrative analysis guide that I just told you to um, open as well that we gave you the link for there. That's what this is, Matthewson, see? Uh, steps for evaluating Old Testament narrative. So you could you could write things like um, uh, plot background in, plot slash background info plot slash uh, uh, details given necessary. For, and I know it's kind of hard to put to put something like that in um, a literary device where you would uh, wait, hold on. I'm trying to pull up two pieces of paper at the same time. If you hear my baby screaming in the background, I apologize. <laughs> uh, but so literary device here, I know that's a, sh you know, you can just abbreviate, but show what literary device we're talking about. These are some of the literary devices, obviously, 
um, right here, where it's easy to write things like scenic structure, crisis, resolution, conclusion. Um, it'd be helpful if you said that, you know, if you wrote plot slash background info, plot slash scenic structure. Um, it, you can also do uh, pace slash gap or pace slash. So you're telling me, are you doing something out of the plot, out of the pace, out of the character development, out of the character types? Uh, out of the point of view, POV. So you can abbreviate it, but just make sure those abbreviations are clearly tying back to these literary devices um, that are um, here from Matthewson. Um, and then you can also go back to the reading where he explains more about it. And that's that's in your, 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 your reading, and that's specifically in week five if you are getting rusty on that. So go back to week five and look at that if you need um, a refresher on that. But essentially, you're you're taking these um, the these two chapters and you're finding, telling me what chapter and verse you're finding the literary device, and then you're just telling me what is the author trying to accomplish. Okay. So if you found something about um, if you're finding something about the plot, you know what what is the author trying to establish about the plot. Um, if, you're, if there's a crisis involved, what, what is the author trying to establish about that crisis? If uh, there's a block of time where, okay, uh, the character is walking by the sea, and then it says the next day, um, that, there was a block of time where the night you know, took place, or maybe that was two weeks later, or w whatever. Sometimes the block of time is significant, and you want to point that out. Now, you could go through and, and give me something for every single one of these, probably. But the idea is that you're finding about 10 of the most important things from those chapters um, and, and making comments on it. So um, you, can, you can do character development um, where the author would give a direct description about this character. Um, sometimes you can see, okay, if they murdered someone, that tells you something about their character, right? Uh, something about what they said to someone might tell you something about their character, if they're grumbling, complaining, if they're praising someone, if they're humble, if they're arrogant. You know, th those sort of things are, are all things that develop a character, tell you who they are and what they're doing. And then um, you also can, can give character types. Um, again, you can probably find way more than 10, but the point is, is I want you to find 10 um, in these two chapters. 10 each in these chapters. Tell me what literary device you're doing, and then what's the author trying to accomplish? So 10 things that give you something significant that the author is trying to accomplish, all right? So that should go relatively quickly. That's that's pretty, pretty easy um, to go through that, okay? And then you're going back, remember, and um, let's see, let me get the right thing up here. Um, uh, let's just do it here. Then you're, then you're going to do the double space paper. So um, once you've done both of them, you're going you're gonna to have Echan and Rahab analyzed together. And when you, when you see all that together, what does that teach you about Yahweh, the loyalty to Yahweh? Okay, so that's, that's essentially 8.1. Again, a lot of you are going to probably choose not to do that and to do the video blog instead. Okay, um, so with the video um, blog, that's 8.3. Let me show you how to do that. Um, now, again, I'll talk about 8.2 in a second. I know I've referenced it briefly in the past, but um, 8.3 is, is going to be essentially um, done kind of like a discussion board, but in a video blog format. Okay, so um, let's, let's show you how to do that. You're going to want to go back to week 8 and, and go to the thematic analysis presentation. Click on that. Uh, well, first, let me read this, and then I'll tell you what to do. In this assignment, you'll create a three- to four-minute video blog. So essentially, you can just do what I'm doing right now, um, where I'm talking to you on a video. Um, you can do it just straight through uh, YouTube and then upload your video, or I'm going to show you in a second how you can do it kind of through YouTube, um, through Blackboard. So if you don't have a YouTube account, um, sign up for a YouTube account, and then you can sign in easily, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, you can also... Uh, if you if you really feel led to do like um, a PowerPoint or a screen presentation, see how I've got my screen up and it's a screen capture and the video capture simultaneously. If you'd like to play with something like that, there is a website called 
um, Screen-O-Matic. So you can just Google Screen-O-Matic, um, and uh, that's what I use. And it's a free resource. I think you can record uh, like up to 10 minutes for free if you want to record more than 10 minutes, which is what I do. I get the pro version, but um, you will only be making a three to four minute video, so you will not need that functionality. But you can also do that and then um, essentially do what I am doing here, which is video and the screen together. So if you had a PowerPoint, you could record the PowerPoint. Um, if you just wanted to record, uh, show your screen to give some notes as you do your, your video um, uh, blog, you can do that. I think I was going to do this page. Okay, that's easier to see the assignment. Okay, so um, yeah. Um, as I mentioned, you, your video needs to be focused on teaching. How are you teaching your theme to the audience watching your video, which are your classmates and your professors? So there's no required setting for your presentation, meaning like I don't care if you're sitting in your room or if you're on a beach or on a mountaintop or in a classroom or in a coffee shop, as long as we can clearly see you and clearly hear you in the video. So be sure you're not like, forgot your headphones and you're in a loud Starbucks and all, you can hear all sorts of people talking and chatting and it's really difficult to to um, see you or you know make sure the light is okay so it's not like dark uh, in the, the room you're at and we can't see your 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 inflection and your communication and that sort of thing so be careful about that um, that's not really a difficult thing but just an important thing um, and then you're essentially uh, taking what you're, you're writing for your paper and you're giving a clear introduction and conclusion about your theme and you're going to emphasize your thesis both in your introduction and conclusion so um, so what you're saying is is okay here's here's my thesis what I'm what I am uh, trying to accomplish in my paper and I'm clearly giving that in my intro of the topic and in my conclusion of what I have said you're clearly talking about your your thesis in both. It's re recommended that you use a prepared structure and transition, meaning that you ha you're not just going, you know, shooting off your hip, but you've kind of gathered your thoughts. And you, um, I don't like the feel of someone reading it, but I also don't like the feel of someone rambling and not sure what they want to say. So if you feel like you need to kind of read or, you know, you need to make some notes for yourself so that you can um, see so that you feel more comfortable clearly um, going through a structure of your intro and conclusion and going over your thesis in both um, and how you want to transition from one to the other. Feel free to do that, but be sure to make sure it is clear to viewers how each section of your presentation fits in with the whole and how the whole is derived from your thesis. So this whole presentation is about your thesis. What are you trying to accomplish by doing the study on this theme? Um, again, don't ramble. Try to be very concise and clear. Speak at a roughly consistent pace and fluctuate your volume and tone when appropriate to keep your listeners engaged. See how I did that right there? Did that engage you? I don't know, but I I sometimes uh, fluctuate uh, meaninglessly. My my my. Uh, desire is to effectively just keep your attention because I know when you're watching a long video it's very difficult so I try to do that hand gestures are quite distracting on a video like this unless I move way back here and and do something so if you're a very hand gesturing type of person feel free to do that but don't do it up here where every time you do that it's going to drive people watching the video crazy do it so that uh, it helps you know or don't do it at all that would be fantastic too. Um, what else? So yeah, your fluctuation with don't be mon don't just read your paper like this and bore us all to death. Please um, use your personality. You guys won't all have my personality, but you will have your personality. And even with some of your uh, what you might think is a dry personality, isn't dry. It's just different. And you can do things within your personality that doesn't violate who you are, that is still engaging, that um, is consistent in pace, but is also fluctuating volume. Okay, I think you get the idea. You do want to conclude with a short section of application. 
why does your study matter? What are we going to do with it as brothers and sisters and saints in the kingdom? How are we going to use your study and apply it to our lives? And then avoid page turning and frequently referring to notes. Um, what I wanted to talk about next, guys, is um, um, my like um, my my conclusion, which is similar to my thesis, um, where I talked about like that would be horrible. I understand some of you will be nervous. You're not going to get completely, you know. It's not going to completely ruin you, so don't feel like you have to take 20 takes if you do have notes and you, you touch them a couple times. But the idea is, is that you're talking fluidly and comfortably, and you're prepared when you start talking to the camera. You're not sitting there wondering where X, Y, and Z is, or you pause for two minutes, um, and we can see you run into the other room because you forgot your notes in there or a pen or whatever. So just avoid that. Um, you're going to be penalized 5% for every 15 seconds below three minutes or beyond four. So the idea is that we want it to be long enough. By the way, you've been watching me now for 21 minutes. So it is not difficult to talk for three minutes. Um, what's going to be difficult, so essentially if you can't talk for three minutes about your paper, you're going to be penalized significantly. But if you go over four minutes, meaning that you didn't prepare enough to concisely and clearly summarize it, um, me and Rachel T.A., who um, is, is not, we don't want to watch all 50 of you talk for 20 minutes each like this. Um, that would be insane. So please, you're going to get marked down if you go beyond four minutes. So it needs to be between three and four minutes where you're clearly concisely going over your stuff. So um, again, again, not again, I haven't talked about this yet. The rubric for this assignment is, is simply what we've just talked about and that uh, it's due like a discussion board. Your main post uh, or this video presentation is due Friday, Friday at midnight. Um, and then, uh, now I know this is a little bit, I, 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 this actually Friday at 12 a.m. is Thursday night. Um, I'm going to give you to literally Friday at midnight. And then Monday, which is night at midnight, which is Tuesday at 12 a.m., is what, as usual with discussions, is when everything else is due. So this says uh, Friday at 12 a.m., which is really Thursday night, right? But I'm actually going to give you till Friday night. I think Thursday is way too soon. So Friday night, because a lot of you haven't really even finished your papers yet and won't until this weekend, but you can at least summarize everything, and hopefully this part will help you for that. But this is due Friday night at midnight, and then you need to post to at least two other video blog peoples um, by Monday night at midnight. Now let me show you how to do this. Similar to the other blog thing that we did earlier, um, but maybe a little bit more complex. Click this, and if your internet is not nice like mine, it will take a minute to open. Mine is trying to open right now, and for whatever reason, causing me to have to fill the space and the void in its deficiency by me talking to you aimlessly as it opens. There we go. Okay, it says, this blog has no entries. Oh dear, whatever do we do? Okay. You're going to go to create blog entry. Now, um, well, let me just click that. Create blog entry. You're going to see the other blogs over there, like, like uh, I'll show you that in a second, like the last time. Um, so you can go here, and you could write like a normal blog. But this, remember, this is a video blog. So just title it um, Christian's blog. And then you see, see this here? It says record from webcam. All right, so there you would click, and then this little friend will pop up. All right, and then it'll tell you, okay, not signed in, sign into YouTube. Um, so then it'll do this little thing. It'll sign in to YouTube. So you need a YouTube account. Um, and then I just click on, I have like two of them, and then I'm just gonna allow it like that. And hopefully that will work. Yeah, boom. So 
then you just click record from webcam and it'll start letting you do it like that I'll just click start record now the other option is to record separately like I said you can use that screen recorder um, software like I use here when you're when you go there it's pretty self-explanatory um, you would need to post it to YouTube and then as I've done um, it has the option to post to different places but you want to post it to YouTube you need a YouTube account to do that YouTube accounts are free uh, but oh dear where is that there okay um, but you can see here if you want to do it ahead of time I can just pull from all of my prior ones that are in my account so I can just insert that one that's probably a little easier especially like if you've got a uh, rough internet connection to record straight in here if you lose internet connection it'll lose the whole thing you can do it that way um, and uh, and that's fine but it's probably easier to record a YouTube video straight to YouTube or you can use that screenomatic software either one is fine but the point is I want you to insert it uh, let, let's see I'll, I'll insert last week's thing this isn't actually a video blog uh, place in place I don't know what that means so just put it in there and that looks like that'll work right uh, and then we can watch it and then um, this is just an example kids and then I will post my entry boom all right so entry is now posting and you can see it right there right right now you can comment isn't that nice you can see the comments and then uh, blog details so anyway over here is where you see the blogs right Christian's blog and so forth so again you'll be able to see other people's blogs there on the right hand side when you hit um, the, the blog stuff you go into the to the thematic analysis presentation all right so that's where you're that's what you're doing with it um, if all else fails, you can always create a blog entry and just, you know, copy and paste a link. But but you can also copy and paste the link by hitting this and posting your YouTube link inside here. I don't know if that's going to work. Yeah, you just post your YouTube link inside and then hit insert. Okay. So there's a couple of different ways you can post your video that we can see it, and that would be lovely. All right. Now let's go back to the big assignment I know this is a lot of me talking but this is very important stuff for your last week and hey I'm only at 27 minutes long right now and even a class would be 50 minutes if you were going to class so so that's that's essentially what class would have been this week right so and you're saving a lot of time you're not commuting to class and this is not going to take me 21 minutes to show this to you so let's the final essay I know you've had this and you've started working on it but essentially you're writing a six-page double-spaced paper studying a single biblical theme that is taught in two to four select OT passages. Following the patterns established in this course, the paper must include a selection and statement and a clear thesis of a single Old Testament theological theme. And remember, I'm telling you that you have to stick with these themes here. Boom. Judgment, grace, redemption, salvation, faith, and hope in God. Those are the themes you have to choose from. Your thesis should explain what you are doing in the paper, namely developing that theological theme from a specific text. One, you're gonna, so you're going to have one main text, one main Old Testament text. So your main text cannot be Matthew or New Testament uh, chapter and verse. It has to be an Old Testament text as your main text. Okay, um, so choose that theological uh, theme from an Old Testament text and you're going to develop that theme from that specific text and then relate it uh, relate this theme to um, the New Testament and New Testament theology um, so it does the whole point is that the old that the theme does not need to be exclusively just an Old Testament phenomenon because uh, you know you're relating it to the New Testament <laughs> but but uh, this theme does not need to be exclusively an Old Testament pho phenomenon. Uh, again, those are the themes. Try not to significantly overlap with themes studied in the course, meaning that the stuff we've done for other assignments, you don't want to overlap it too much. But 
but that was kind of the point of these themes is that they wouldn't do that too much okay so essentially you're you're taking your theme let's say it was um let's say it was hope in god and you're 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 saying what's your specific text that you're taking that hope in god and you're relating this theme to old testament and new testament theology so the study of god overall this is my this is my core text hope in god i'm taking it from let's say exodus blah 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 and i'm i'm showing you how that is is a theme throughout scripture all right um now you're going to have two to four biblical passages okay let me just read this part because when i get off pace it doesn't help a written summary of exegetical and contextual historical analysis this is stuff that you did in week seven uh, of two to four biblical passages using genre specific study interpretive technique developing your theological theme i know guys i know that that sentence hurts your heads it does i know it does but just slow down take a deep breath and let's just process that sentence it's not so bad it's not see how i i used inflection there it's not so bad a written summary of exegetical and contextual historical that just means what's the context the history helps give you the context so if you're doing something out of uh exodus what's the context people of israel are exiting egypt going to the promised land or wandering around the desert that's the history and the context that's why we have contextual history historical okay so that's the the context summary of the exegetical that's that's looking at the scripture studying a passage essentially uh and the context see week seven we did this stuff in week seven for help and you're going to analyze two to four biblical passages so you got your main passage but then you've got your analysis of two to four biblical passages you know, other passages using genre specific study that's the stuff like narrative analysis so if if, if these other these other passages have uh, or your main passage ha is a narrative you, you could do a narrative analysis type of thing on it if it, if there's poetic elements involved in your scripture you could do poetic analysis you see what i'm saying so so you're looking at the type of genre of these biblical passages and then you're doing you know your study or your interpretation techniques that we did in those genre analyses to develop your theological theme so what does that all mean it just simply means that you're taking into account the historical context and your newfound love of doing a study based on understanding what the genre is so doing things like interpreting a narrative and and you're developing your theme using the skills that you've already done in the class see how we how we put that all together right so you've done you've done different genre um, analysis stuff um, and and with doing that um, we're now being able to apply it to this thematic analysis okay um include any relevant info on ancient near eastern backgrounds what what does that mean uh the context again so knowing the history um you can you can use a bible background commentary those are very helpful um to find relevant information on your main passage in particular and even your other biblical passages that are supporting your theme so again if we're doing hope in god you got your main passage that you're going to center the the thesis and the study around but then you're going to support it obviously with other biblical passages um, not from the same chapter or the same book please so you're going to show that this is in other places in scripture that's the whole point so don't give me four passages for your paper all out of exodus that doesn't help anything right um, you're trying to establish a biblical theme all right uh, an exploration of how your theological theme interacts with broader Old and New Testament theology. Okay, um, so in other words, let me just read it. How does your theme, as found in your selected passages, sharpen, agree with, or contradict with other theological themes in Scripture? So how does the concept of hope in God uh, interact with the the concept of judgment because we got hope 
of, of salvation, hope of, of the restoration of all creation, but yet we've got this somber reality check, fear of God dynamic with the judgments. How does that fit? So um, you, you can do this with a lot of things, but you can um, certainly take your theme and, and what is the most natural theme, uh, other themes that you could interact with it with. So the idea here is to take your theme and think about, okay, what are those other types of, of themes in Scripture? It doesn't have to just be, okay, we did hope, and then there is a judgment theme. So that might be easier. You know, um, you could certainly take grace and, and compare that to judgment. You could take salvation and redemption um, and compare that to judgment. You could take faith and compare it to grace. You could take uh, faith and compare it to hope. But but um, so you could just stay within these. But when you're doing your comparison, you can feel free to go to other themes. You have to use one of these themes as your main theme, but you can go to other themes um, to do that part of the study. All right. Um, so again, how does how does your theme sharpen, agree with, or contradict other theological themes in Scripture? Additionally, how might it develop from the Old Testament to the New Testament? So. So there's a concept of judgment throughout Scripture, right? But there is a different um, bent. When you read the prophets talking about judgment, or you read in Genesis and the dynamic of judgment um, when you're looking at Noah, and, and then you read the concept of judgment in the New Testament, um, different, different dynamic going on, different covenant, different time. <laughs> and, and so you, you would obviously need to, to flesh that out a bit. Um, how would it develop? How does the theme of judgment develop from the Old Testament to New Testament? Interact with at least one theme that was studied in this course. So in that respect, you know, um, these other themes, so it means you take your theme and you're and interacting that with one of the themes that you've studied throughout this course already in one of our other assignments, okay? And then you're going to have a section detailing the five implications of your study's conclusions upon the faith and practice of the church. What does that mean? Okay. So, uh, now you're, you're obviously will be making conclusions or, or uh, making statements about what your theme is essentially saying. Um, but what we want you to do is, for the life and practice, the faith and practice of, of the church, if you're saying, okay, now, if you're, let's say you were preaching this to the church, here's my study. Now, this is what this means. Here is... Um, uh, an entire section that you're dedicating um, to to uh, the practice of the church. So what does this mean for for us as a church? What do we do with this? Um, that is kind of an application, but what we're we're calling it implications, meaning how does the church respond? And then use at least five published academic resources with full MLA style citations and a works out of it. We've talked about all that earlier, how to do that in the course. But the point is, is you need to have used, not just not just have them in your bibliography, but used five. Remember, you found a lot more than that, but use at least five published academic resources um, in your paper. Um, all right. So here's here's the thing. It's a six page double spaced paper. Please do not go over eight pages um, and please don't go under five. I don't even know how you would do this in less than five pages. Um, okay, so the the idea here is it's going to be really hard for us to grade it if you're not very clear what you're doing in these sections. So please, please, please. I know it's you know uh, we've we've talked about having a, a thesis and and things like intro and conclusion, but um, I don't care as long as it's clear about where your thesis is. Um, well, obviously we'll probably go in this in this section um, and and conclusion. Um, in another section. I don't care how you mark that in your paper. I could care less if you wrote introduction and you wrote conclusion at a, at a different parts or thesis in there somewhere. But I do definitely, and this is just out of convenience for grading, I want you to literally cut and paste like this um, these, these sections, these bulleted lists, and then open up your, your paper. Let me just do this real quick. Um, how do I do a new one? What's this file? New. And and I literally want you to cut and paste them in your paper 
and oh, that's going to be messy. Hold on. Like this. And so you literally have these five sections. And so under this section, maybe um, it'd be helpful to start writing. Um, so you, you would write my thesis is blah, blah, blah. And, and maybe you put this part in bold to make it really easy for us grading the, to see what's going on here. And then you would address all the stuff in this bullet list in this section. And maybe it takes you, you know, even longer than that. And then you would do the same thing here, um, uh, you know, where you talk about other biblical passages that I'm going to cover talking about the exegetical and contextual historical blah blah blah. It's going to be here and you put that in bold. Just so this paper is going to be very easy for us to grade in each section so that we can go through and say, hey, here you didn't you didn't actually do this little part here that was supposed to be in this section and so forth. Um, just going to make it way easier that way. Okay. Um, now obviously at this last one where it says the use of at least five published academic resources, um, you don't need to cut and paste that. I, if you do, I'm not going to mark off. But that's easy because you're it's already going to be in a clear section because you're going to have um, a uh, bibliography at the end. So don't forget to put your bibliography at the end. And then we'll be able to go back and see if you actually used those five sources and used MLA style citations. So you don't actually have to cut and paste this part into your paper, but you can if you really want to. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Okay. So that is um, essentially your assignment 8.2. All right. I hope that is pretty clear. I know I talked for forever, but very important this last week. You've got a lot going on, and I want you to be very clear on what we're looking for here. Um, you know, this is really your first big paper in college, at Moody at least, for those of you that haven't done any college yet, which is a lot of you. So. Um, these things don't have to be absolutely perfect, um, but give it your best go. Don't slack off and leave it to the last minute. And um, I look forward to seeing how you guys do. Feel free to Facebook me or email me if you got any questions. And it's your last week and you get a break. So work hard. Love to you all. Bye-bye.